All right, our topic for today is Unit 1.4, and this is Day 2, and we are going to be working with operations with polynomials. And so we're going to kind of take everything that we've had up until this point and kind of culminate it into what we consider polynomials and how they work. And so a lot of this will seem familiar to you already, um, but it's some things that we have to kind of take all our skills already and kind of put them all together. And so our objective today is kind of what our objective has been the last few times here, is that we're going to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials and create examples to support our reasoning. So in this video, I'm going to at least show you how to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. And then some of the stuff that we're going to do in class is going to be creating these examples um, and supporting our reasoning um, based on some of the information that we know. And so before we get started, we need to do a little bit of vocab review. So a monomial is a single-term expression with combinations of numbers, variables, and exponents. So it can just be kind of some of these things. So for example, um, it doesn't have to just necessarily be you know whole numbers, but we could have 1 fourth x to the second, y to the fourth. And that's just an example of monomials. Just a single term, just kind of expression there um, that doesn't really have anything else going on with it. A polynomial, on the other hand, is a monomial. So it can be just a monomial, or it can be the sum of monomials. So we can basically take this 1 fourth x to the second, y to the fourth, and add something to it. So let's say 2xy to the third. So we have that there, so that's an example that we have there. Now if we want to, we could keep adding to that, and there's really no end to what we could add or subtract together. Um, degree of a polynomial, the next one there, is the highest degree. of any term in the polynomial. So we basically just take the highest degree and that's our overall degree of the polynomial. So if we look at this example that I have up above here, so if I gave you these two here, so we have 1 fourth x squared y squared, or y to the fourth and 2xy to the third, this one here, whoops, um, this one here has a degree of 4 this one here has a degree of 6. And so the overall degree of that polynomial would be 6. And so whatever the highest is, that's our overall degree. And then our standard form is terms are written from largest to smallest degree. And so when we're lining up these polynomials, we want to make sure that in standard form, whenever we're done, so after we add, after we subtract, after we multiply, we take all our degrees and we kind of shuffle them around so that we have the largest to the smallest, and that's what we call our standard form. And so we're going to be working with that today as well as everything else. So the first thing that we're going to look at is addition of polynomials. Now, with addition of polynomials, this really doesn't do anything more than just simply adding and subtracting like terms. But if you look at this, we have two expressions in parentheses. And each one of those individually are polynomials. So here's a polynomial, and then here's a polynomial. So the idea of those is that those are there so that we can at least kind of separate things so that we know what belongs with what. Now, when we're adding polynomials, we have two steps. The first step is to basically drop the parentheses because since we're adding, there's really nothing that we need to do. And then what we're going to do is we're con going to combine like terms. And so if I rewrite this, 5x to the third plus 6x squared plus 7, and I'm going to drop the parentheses, plus 4x to the fourth minus 9x squared plus 3x to the third minus 6x plus 3. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my like terms. So I can go through there and I can start highlighting and looking at my like terms. And so remember when we're looking at like terms, we're not, you know, we're not multiplying these anymore, we're adding these. So our you know, previous rules apply. So we have 5x to the third and we have 3x to the third, that's a like term. And then we have 6x to the second and negative 9x to the second. And then if we keep going with this, it looks like we have plus 7 would be our next like term, and then plus 3 would be our last like term. And those are the only like terms that we have. And so what I like to do is, you know, we talked about putting this in standard form after we add. You know, we can do that, but what we can do is we can just start with the highest degree. So we have 4x to the fourth. You know, that's alone. And so right there, we already have our highest degree in front. 
And then we go to the next one. So we have 5x to the third plus 3x to the third gives me plus 8x to the third. And the next one we have 6x squared minus 9x squared, which gives me negative 3x squared. And then we have minus 6x, and then we have plus 10 when I combine 7 plus 3. And so really addition of polynomials is no different than adding and subtracting and combining like terms. It's just that we give it another name um, when we're given something else to work with. Now our example for subtraction, so we have kind of a similar idea when we're adding and subtracting and combining like terms, but the idea is that adding and subtracting of polynomials works very similar to as well. The only difference here is that we have the subtraction in the middle. And so just like we've done before when we were simplifying expressions, any time that we had a negative or we had a subtraction out in front of a set of parentheses, we needed to distribute that subtraction. And so that's what we're going to do here. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this subtraction and we're going to distribute it to each and every single one of these terms, just like we have done before. And then we're going to read our, rewrite our problem. So we have 8x to the third plus 5x to the second minus 2 minus 2x to the third plus 4x to the second because that's already got a subtraction so it just changes sign plus 2x plus, plus 8. And so there's our subtraction. So basically what we do is we distribute the subtraction and then we no longer need our parentheses. So now we're going to do the same thing and combine our like terms. So we're going to look for highest degrees. And so we have 8x to the third and negative 2x to the third. 5x to the second, 4x to the second, and then I have negative 2 and positive 8. So I'm going to go ahead and combine those like terms. So I get 6x to the third. So again, I'm starting with the highest degree. And then I have plus 9x to the second, plus 2x, and then plus 6. So notice what I'm doing there is it's exactly the same thing that we've done before. We are adding and subtracting like terms. But the idea is that, first of all, we're recognizing that we have two different polynomials. So maybe these just represent different things. And so this is all one quantity of something. And then, so this is all one thing. And then this is all one thing. So maybe they just represent different quantities. Uh, but we're just subtracting them and adding them in the same way that we've, done, that we've done before. And then just making sure that we put it in standard form when we're all done. So we're always putting this from highest to lowest degree. Now, like I said, I like to do this while I'm combining like terms because it doesn't matter how I add those together as long as I add them together. So I can pick and choose which ones I want to add first so long as I keep that negative or that subtraction with that particular term so that I don't get anything confused with what it actually is. And so finally, we're going to go over some multiplication of polynomials. Now, we've kind of seen this before. Um, and, you know, the notes that I've shown you before, you know, I talked about this double distribution method or this multiple distribution method. And so the idea here is that our first step to multiply polynomials is to distribute the terms of one polynomial um, to the other polynomial. So if we look at the example that I have here in front of you, you have 8x minus 5 being multiplied by 3x squared minus 30x plus 5. And so the idea here is that I'm going to take each one from you know the one polynomial and distribute it to the other. So the first thing is I'm going to take this 8x and I'm going to distribute this to each of the terms in the polynomial. That's after it. And then I'm going to do that same thing with this negative 5. I'm going to distribute that negative 5 to all three pieces in the other side. So instead of using our FOIL method, which only use binomials, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply polynomials by basically taking everything from one and distributing it into the other one term at a time. And so the idea is when I do this, 8x times 3x squared is going to give me 24x to the third because now I'm actually bumping up my exponent, so I'm using my exponent rules, minus 240x to the second, because I have 8 times negative 30, and then x times x, and then plus 40x. And so that's the first half of my problem. Now the second half of the problem is distributing that negative 5, and so I'm going to run out of space here, but I'm going to put it underneath, but everything is being kind of combined together. So then we have minus 15x to the second, plus, because they're both negative, 150x, 
and then minus 25. So this is our expression that we run into. And so now, once I distribute all this, now I can just go back and I can start to combine my like terms. But if you notice, the way that I did this is I staggered it in such a way that I have these two things that are being combined together and I have these two things that are being combined together. And so I can start with my highest degree, 24x to the third, that stays the same, minus 255x squared, because that would be negative 240 minus 15, or negative 240 plus negative 15. And then the next one would be plus 190x, 40 plus 150, and then minus the 25. And so I kind of did all three of those steps one at a time. So the first thing that I did is I distributed all those. So I distributed one, one term to the other polynomial and then the other term to the other polynomial, wrote them out, and combine my like terms, and then just all the while, keeping in mind that as I write this, I want to write this from highest to lowest degree, which is our standard form. Okay, and so we have one more example of this. Now we have multiple terms with multiple expressions here. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this one piece at a time. So first I'm going to distribute the 1, or the 3y to the 4th, I should say, so my first term there. And then I'm going to get the following. 3y to the 4th. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't actually multiply that. So it would be 9y to the 7th plus 3y to the 5th minus 9y to the 8th. And then I'm going to go plus 6y to the 4th. And so that gives me my first, my first set. So that one's done. So now I'm going to take this negative 3y and I'm going to distribute that too as well to each one of these. So if you notice, I'm just kind of going piece by piece here. So I have negative 9y to the fourth minus 3y to the second plus 9y to the fifth and then minus 6y. And so that gives me that term or that line of my polynomial. And so the next thing, I'm going to do the last one now. So I'm going to distribute this plus 4 to each one of the terms in the other polynomial. And so that gives me 12y to the third plus 4y minus 12y to the fourth and then plus 8. And so now, if you notice, yes, I do have a lot of stuff here. Um, there's a lot going on as far as, you know, my image here and how many different things that I have. So we just have to be careful with what we have and just kind of organize it in a way that would make sense to us. And so the first thing is I'm going to look for like terms. And so the first set of like terms is maybe start with the highest degree. You know, you can do whichever that you want. It really doesn't make a difference. And so here I have 3y to the fifth and I have 9y to the fifth. I have nine, negative 9y to the 4th and 6y to the 4th. And I also have a negative 12y to the 4th. And I have plus y to the 4th and minus, not y to the 4th, 4y, and then minus 6y. And it looks like that's all the like terms that I have. So then I can go ahead now and I can combine those together. I'm going to start with my highest degree, which would be negative 9y to the 8th plus 9y to the 7th. I don't have a y to the 6th, but I have a y to the 5th, so I have 3 plus 9, which would be plus 12y to the 5th. I look for my 4s, y to the 4s. So I have negative 9 plus 6 minus 12, and so I have to go through a little bit of manipulation there, and I'll get minus 15y to the fourth, plus 12y to the third, which is down here, and minus 3y to the second, which doesn't have a like term. And then I have my plus 4y and my minus 6y, which gives me negative 2y, and then finally my plus 8. So in some cases, yes, this multiplication is very tricky. There's a lot to it. You know, I'll show you another method in class that we can add to our notes. 
but the idea is that you just identify the like terms and just kind of go through it piece at a time. So don't try to do more than you need to all at once. Just kind of work through the examples, you know, try to figure out what you're adding, what you're subtracting, you know, and then finally what you're multiplying, and then just go through the process that we normally do by combining our like terms. And so that's going to do it for our video today, and we'll continue this in class.